Maybe Caroline will start the live stream. There we go, already. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Scott, um, I'm going to call upon our vice chair to give the opinion of the standards committee and the um, results, if I may. OK, um, I'm going to hand over to Mike Lewis. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, Councillor Scott. Can I just check again, please, that you can see and hear me clearly? Yes, thank you. Perfect, thank you. OK, well, first of all, I think the committee would just like to express their thanks to everybody that's been before us today for the way that the, um, the this meeting has been conducted. That's both the Ombudsman for Wales office and indeed yourself, Councillor Scott. It's, it's helped us enormously in being able to follow the process in a coherent and a manageable way. So can I just thank the, the, the three of you for the way that you have conducted yourself today? Um, the Ombudsman for Wales office, uh, just before we, we broke to go into stage three, referred us to page 397 of the bundle, and that was some guidance for the committee in terms of how we should consider uh, the, the seriousness of the, of the breach of the, of the Code of Conduct, and indeed how we might consider uh, any sanction that, that is applicable. And I would like to confirm that the, the committee has indeed done that, uh, we're grateful for that guidance and we have indeed followed, followed that, uh, that, that guidance uh, in coming to this decision. Uh, if I may, I'll, I'll refer to each of those paragraphs in turn. So paragraph 33.1 asks the, the Standards Committee to assess the seriousness of the breach. Uh, and you'll know, Councillor Scott, from our, from our previous conversation that we had indeed uh, found that there was a breach of the, the Code of Conduct. Uh, and in assessing that seriousness of the breach, the factors that we took into account included the fact that there was a financial element to the uh, Mumbles Community Council as a result of the breach of, of, um, of, the, of the code, that money was spent to a private company. And you accepted, uh, Councillor, in response to my question, that you were aware that you were dealing with a private company, a private company normally acts uh, for uh, to make profits and would not normally expect to do work or attend meetings without being paid. So you accepted that. Uh, so we acknowledged and we recognised that there was a financial element uh, or a financial implication, shall I say, of your actions in terms of breaching the code. Uh, and that it was at a time when not only was there a financial element or a financial implication, uh, that, that was also the time when the expenditure to CDN planning consultants was over and above the, the budget which was already in place. And therefore the committee did consider that this was quite a serious breach because there was a financial implication as a result. We also considered the reputational damage that was done to the community council as a result of these factors uh, and we took that into account. Moving therefore to 33.2, we discussed a broad range of sanctions, at least those that are within our gift to apply today. Uh, and I have to say that the tribunal did consider the whole range of sanctions at our disposal today. But moving on to 33.3, we did also take into account the considerable mitigating uh, uh, circumstances and the aggravating circumstances that were we were reminded of today by the Ombudsman's Office. And in particular, in terms of mitigation, we do want to acknowledge and recognise the Audit Wales report highlighted, albeit a year or two later, but nevertheless, it's, it's in the bundle and we should take account of it. It did acknowledge that the financial regulations and some aspects of the standing orders were uh, inadequate. And those were the standing orders and financial regulations that were adopted, I think, actually, at the meeting that you were appointed chair, Councillor Scott. So we recognise that those financial regulations and standing orders were inadequate uh, at the relevant time and had been inadequate for some time. And we also recognise that in one sense, uh, you felt that this and you recognise that you this was an ongoing situation with CDN. 
and um, forgive me for calling them CDN just just for shorthand, uh, that this was a situation which probably had been unacceptable for some time because of the inadequacies in those financial regulations. And we did accept uh, your mitigation that in a sense that whilst you accepted you were naive um, and you the, the committee did feel that perhaps five months into the role there would have, there would have been an opportunity for you to question as chair are we okay here um, do those regulations make sense are we within budget so that was an aggravating factor that we took into account but it, but there was significant mitigation in the sense of you were an inexperienced councillor uh, very recently elected uh, a very inexperienced chair um, appointed within the first couple of weeks of being appointed even to the to the committee uh, to, to, to the council I'm sorry uh, and with no previous experience I think from your from your from your previous life so considerable mitigation uh, in the sense of your experience and as you described it uh, a role in program which probably had been in um, unacceptable and inadequate for some time so we also accepted and the Ombudsman clarified this and confirmed it in response to a question this morning. There was no financial gain here for you. There was no personal interest. There was nothing for you to, to gain out of it. And again, uh, we accept that evidence. So in terms of further mitigation, uh, we do accept that you were acting uh, perhaps naively in your words, but with the best interests of the uh, constituents of the area in mind. And we do accept that. Uh, and therefore, was as I say, under 33.2, whilst we did consider the whole range of sanctions available to us, uh, we did take into account the considerable mitigation that we saw in this case. Uh, we note the Ombudsman's recommendation as to where on the spectrum of available sanctions it should land. And our decision, therefore, today uh, as a committee, taking all the above into account, is that we would like to issue a formal censure uh, to you, Councillor Scott, uh, for the reasons that I've that I've uh, that I've mentioned, uh, I'm now going to hand back, if I may, to the monitoring officer to explain exactly uh, what will happen next and the next next steps. Thank you, thank you, um, uh, uh, Vice Chair. Thank you. Um, yes, Councillor Scott, it will now be for the committee to send to you a full decision. Um, that's been made today. I will endeavour to get that out via the committee within the next 10 days as per our hearing procedure. Um, so hopefully you will have that uh, with, very shortly. I will have to run it past the committee first, obviously, before it's sent out. Um, and I should remind you that you do, of course, have a right of appeal to the Adjudication Panel for Wales. I think that you have to appeal within 21 days. I think, and I stand to be corrected by the Ombudsman, of receipt of our decision letter or decision notice. So I just should remind you that you do have that right of appeal, but all the details of that will be contained within our decision letter, Councillor Scott. Okay. If I may then, um, do we call that to be a conclusion for that particular item? Does anybody else want any further comment? None. Thank you very much. Then. So, um, Councillor Scott, can we? Yes. yes, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for participating. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Sorry. So we've got to invite back. Wait a minute now. Cool. Which was filled on now? Just here. Waiting to invite um, Councillor Fraser back in, and then we'll go on to the last part of our meeting. Was that okay, Chair? That I represent our views? We still recording, Mike. Yeah, that was really good, Mike. Thank you. I was uh, going to wait for the. We are still recording.
It's not. Sorry, we're just waiting to call the other members back in. Oh, Phil is saying there was no sound on the live link. In there. It, oh, the sound did go off, but it's back on. Sorry, let's see if Phil Craigbirds can. He's going to rejoin. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Back on. Very interesting. I um, didn't hear the sanction. There was no sound. When you came back on the live stream, there's no sound halfway through. Okay. I can see Mike's mouth going and everybody moving. <laughs> well, we'll put the recording online so it'll be yeah. on. Right it's amazing of all the parts that it didn't capture. That is the one part. <laughs> the one but, thing everybody wanted to hear probably was. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I tried rejoining on my iPad everything, but it's obviously the stream was dead. But, um, uh, yes, so the last item we're going on is for the... Um, because the of exclusion of the public. Um, agenda item six, a monitoring officer advice is to exclude the public whilst we discuss the request for dispensation, which is included at agenda item seven. So are you all happy to exclude the public from this part of the discussion? Yes? Yes. Okay. Yeah, all in favour, thank you. All agreed. Okay, let me just uh, stop the recording and we'll stop the live feed.